In this episode, I speak with Victoria Fitz, who has created this fantastic online community, Parenting Boys, Growing Men. And we cover aspects, uh, the importance of honouring and nurturing and respecting our young boys so that they grow up to be the leaders in our communities, the leaders that we expect and the leaders that we deserve. Stay tuned right through the episode because you're going to be as fascinated with the conversation as I was. Welcome to Stories from the Red Couch, episode 55. My name is Robin Cook and today I've got Victoria Fitz on the couch with me. Hello, Victoria. Hi, Robin. How are you? Fabulous. How are you? Very excited to be here. Good. <laughs> Thanks for coming. It's all right. Thanks for the invite. Uh, I've just been watching your community grow over the last little while. Parenting boys, growing men. That's what it's called, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Tell me about it. Well, I guess I've... I'm a parent of a, a young eight-year-old um, boy mm -hmm. and people have told me to follow what your passion is and um, you know, there's a saying that if you follow your passion you'll never work a day in your life. Yes. And <laughs> for me um, being a parent is definitely a passion mm -hmm. and uh, when I look around there's some amazing work and, and courses and support for parents of young babies. Mm -hmm. The new kids head off to school and there's support for, for that age group. But when you become sort of seven or eight years of age, grow into early teens, there's not much happening there. It quite drops off at that point, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it does at, the, at, at that school level as well. You, they're very involved early on in their schooling and once they get to adolescence and high school, well... It's kind yeah. of like you've got this thing and you're meant to know how to look after it. Yeah. You know, you, you worked out the first five years, but... <laughs> What I've realised is the first five years, you know, there's one set of rules and then they grow into these new beings. You know, mm. it could be changing every day. Mm. And um, so Parenting Boys Growing Men is about growing this community, um, having support there, real life support, not just textbook support, not just um, this is the theory. It's not the same, is it? You really no. need those real life experiences yeah. to inform you about what's going on and and, and get a sense of uh, the possibilities yeah. of, of boys. And it's not, um, it's not all pretty, you know. No. <laughs> there's, there's this stuff that I didn't even know. So I'm a girl, I've always been a girl, yep. and I've grown up with boys, but I just didn't know so many differences yeah. between us and them. Yeah. You know, for starters, they smell, and they're messy, and, you know, this order and system that I naturally have as a female or as a person that I am yes. doesn't seem to happen in the boys in my no. world so just negotiating that yeah. um, and I've put this community together it's more of a, a collection of research that I've done um, interviews with people finding out information mm -hmm. blogs and keeping it real in terms of what's really happening and let's not be perfect because mm. life's not perfect it's not Easy. And it isn't, is it? And, and I, I think that when you try and make it perfect, when you try and live up to some ideal, you can just really come a cropper and the whole thing just falls apart rather yeah. than winging it like we're doing right now <laughs> and saying, well, this is, this is pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with this. And for me, Robin, you know, I look at social media and everything's beautiful, everything's perfect. I know. It's, it's um, all just so manicured, but real life's not manicured no. like that. And um, I've been in a position over the last few years where I've had an opportunity to speak to over 3,000 people. Seriously, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. That's incredible. You must have learnt a tremendous amount from that. I have. And talking to this many people, you know, majority of them have had issues with family breakdowns. Um, issues with raising kids and domestic violence. So these are three really core pertinent things in our life and these people's lives aren't perfect and they're looking for help, they're looking for support. And um, there's some common themes that, that I've sort of become aware of in yeah. that process. So yeah. How hard is it for people to ask for help? Yeah, that's huge. It's that's huge, a, isn't yeah. it? 
People just don't ask for help. No. People. Um, Why don't we do that? I think it's because that perfect world, they, you know, um, so many people need to be at that point of desperation. They need to mm. be at worlds falling apart mm. before they can say, hey, I'm, I'm ready, I need some help. Which is crazy because so You wouldn't many... get to that point if help was there sooner. Yeah. And if we worked as a community, yeah. you know, the old saying takes a village to raise ki mm. a, a child mm. and mm. we're operating in isolation so much that village just isn't happening. Well, because it takes people to create a village, yeah. doesn't it? We need to come together as a group to make a village. And we just need to... Um, and I think that it starts with a hello. It starts with a how are you going? Not a are you okay, but... I know. <laughs> I know. It's such a challenging concept that, I mean, I really agree with the, with the idea of checking in and making sure people are all right, uh, but it feels a little bit tokenistic. Yeah. Mm. And we just, um, in my opinion, we need to slow down a little bit. We mm. just need to go, okay, how do we do this? What's the next step? Mm. Um, and recognise people and be able to see that... Um, that mum at the bus stop is looking really disheveled this week mm. and she's running 10 minutes late every single day to pick the kids up. So say to her or him, whichever, you know, it might be a father, can I drop the kids home for you today? Can I help out? Can yeah. I do something? Um, because people don't like asking mm. and, you know, you're not overstepping any lines there. You're just yeah. saying, hey, can I lend a hand? Then you end up with a, a whole group of people, a whole community that are running yeah. 10 minutes late, yeah. aren't we? we? We often are all strapped for time Going and trying to achieve too much. What do you think that is? Why do you think we are so busy? I think we've created that busyness, or maybe the marketers, marketing has created busyness. Mm. You know, it's that urge of we must have that great job, we must have that great car, we must, we must, we must. But at the heart of it, we just need to, to slow down and connect from a heart space and really ask ourselves what, what's important to us. Mm. Um, and I've done it, I've done it for years, just raced 100 miles an hour and um, I have to have that job, I have to buy the house, I have to. Mm. And um, at the end of the day, I've, I've got this young man who is growing into a young man mm. and I'm like, wow, I'm teaching him this hurriness, this busyness. And it's yeah. almost a sickness that if we don't learn how to slow down. Um, so what do you think the impact is on, on, our, on our children when we do this? I don't think they're connected. I don't think they're connected to themselves, um, to the world around them. So many families are rushing that everything's being done for the kids and it's being a, a really safe environment, safe boundaries being put in place. Mm. So then the children aren't able to explore, they're not able to risk take. Yes. They don't have the, the freedom to, to make a mistake because everything's so scheduled yeah. and so planned. So what that's happening or the result of that is that kids as teenagers are finally getting a little bit of freedom and they don't know what to do with it. Mm. And, um, you know, if a 15, 16 year old's never taken a risk, never crossed a road by themselves, never had to climb a tree, mm. you know, all of those really important things to teach the kids when they're young yeah. um, gives them the opportunity to learn that risk taking as teenagers. Yeah. And it means that we're gonna have less kids die in car accidents. Yes, yes, because they'll know their limits. <laughs> because they know their limits. Mm. They know what happens when they scare themselves. Mm. Um, and I'm not suggesting that four year olds cross roads by themselves. No, but I know what you're saying. We, we, um, with uh, a little bit more freedom outside and, and uh, some play equipment that they can climb on and tumble off and yeah. and so on they'll get that the hang of it and determination is another really big thing Robin mm. if we're always doing stuff for our kids um, or we are really restricted or right say homework we take homework as a you must do this have you done your homework mm. then what happens when they get to university and there's no one writing them there's That's no right. one asking them to do it yes um, even if you look at learning how to tie a shoelace mm. okay velcro shoes I know, I know. It's appalling, really, isn't it? <laughs> These kids are never learning to, you know, that, that mm. ability to just keep trying. Yes. The determination that's required to learn how to tie the shoelace. Yes. Because there's that slip-on shoe, they don't have to do it. Mm. And I know it's only a shoelace, but... Well, I guess that the, those Velcros, 
<clears throat> shoes are there because we don't have the time to teach them yeah. in the first place to tie their shoes up because we're running out the door. Running out the door. <clears throat> yeah. So let's go, let's do it, let's go. And, um, you know, the, the knock-on effect there's just going to be detrimental. And we can look at youth suicide, self-harming, um, people talk about respect. It, mm. It's all just this crazy stuff that's, in my opinion, happening because these kids aren't even grounded. Mm. They're not mm. connected to themselves. Yeah. Um, and it is that rush. It is that let's go. That so what do you think rush. by creating uh, your community, parenting boys, growing men, is... Oh, is, is going to achieve in that area. What, what are your hopes for it? I, I guess we can't really think about it. We shouldn't really think about it in terms of what you want to achieve because who knows? Yeah. What would you like to see? So what I'd like to see, um, I guess, is people, parents, grown-ups, community, just re-evaluating the way we approach our boys in particular. Um, and I guess it does go for girls equally, but the expectations that we have on, on young boys, don't cry, mm. be strong, man up, don't be a sissy. These stereotypes can be really negative mm. because they're humans. Mm. They're boys, but they're humans. Mm. And these emotions and feelings mm. are what we all have. Yeah. And when we're teaching boys to be resistant to how they feel, then gets to the point where they don't know how it is. That's right. So if we just And how to express that because it can become explosive, can't it? Oh definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So if we go back a few steps and we start treating our boys with respect from you know from babies, we treat them with the same respect that we do with adults as girls and we just honour them as people and go, oh okay, you look like you're feeling angry right now. What do I need to, can I support you in that? How does that look? Yeah. And teach them how to express that anger mm. so that, you know, these boys, when they become 15 or 16, if they've never learned how to deal with their emotions, they will explode mm. and they will um, be doing risky behaviour. Yes. And, um, recklessness, a recklessness. general recklessness, isn't there? So I guess for me, it's, it's bringing it back and just go, okay, well, respect is that core value for me that we really need to be sharing with boys. Yes. And the community is about supporting parents to do, um, to parent in a respectful way. So in terms of holding those tricky conversations, you know, how do we manage it? How do we manage mm. our own behavior? Mm. So we're not reacting. And that's right, because you know it takes a certain amount of, of self-awareness and, and, and a capacity for reflection to even recognize our own behavior. Yep. It, it's so automatic that we don't even realise that perhaps our behaviour is questionable. Yeah. And mm. what often happens in families that I've become aware of is that the way we respond to our family members, we feel it's safe. They're the, it's the environment where um, people know us the most. Mm. So our filters tend to go out the window. So in, if you're in a workplace mm. and someone frustrates you or you get angry, yes. we've got these levels of filters that we sort of go, oh, I can't, I can't lash out, I, I need yes. to hold my tongue, there's language I can't behave, I can't hit someone at work. Yes. But when, it, when we take that home and we feel those same emotions, um, in families there's a tendency sometimes that we take those filters out. Yes. Um, and that, I mean, that, that's a lineage thing, that's a cultural thing, mm. Um, mm. but it's not necessarily okay. So the community is about helping people to realise that we can behave the same everywhere. Yeah. And um, just the way we, because we were parented one way doesn't mean that we have to parent that way. That's right. And there are other skills there that we can learn of course, in doing of course. that. That's fabulous. And um, is it, uh, how do people access this? Are they going through, because I know that it's a Facebook there's a Facebook group. Yeah. Is that how you're presenting it to the community or are you holding meetings or...? Yeah, so at this stage, we, we're early, we're young. Um, we have a Facebook group. Yes. We have a, uh, a website, mm -hmm. parentingboysgrowingmen.com. Yes. And from that, um, each week, every Friday, there's a new blog that comes up okay. with a different topic. Fantastic. Um, and you're writing the blogs? I'm writing the blogs. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, and... Um, you, 
you know, some of it, there's always a, a trigger from, from our home um, of course. and our life. And that, it's like, I mean, it, Yes, because it, it really does, then it is real. It is real. It is happening. And if it's happening in your home and family, it's going to be happening in other yeah homes and families, isn't yeah. it? And I mean, the, the blog that's coming out um, this weekend, and it's about me reflecting on how I was triggered and how I managed that, how I called in an outside support who let me talk through it. So when I was able to, to talk to um, talk to the boys about what had happened, I was able to be really clear on what I wanted yes. before I went in there. Good. And you know, that's me calling in my community, me recognizing, oh, I'm, I'm not happy with this and working out a strategy on how yeah. to fix it. What about people who say that, uh, you know, even this level of um, discussion and uh, insightfulness and, and uh, there's that sense that we are just mollycoddling, uh, uh, you know, an emotional element for these kids where... You know, rather than just saying, you know, suck it up, sweetheart, get over it. There's so much that we're analysing and... Uh, yeah, what, what, think, what are your thoughts around that? I mean, not, not that all... I was very clear, <laughs> of course, but I think you get my, uh, you get my point. Yeah, so we, I mean, we're real in our home. We yes. don't analyse everything. Yeah. It's not okay. all about, um, oh, let's talk about and break down and, you know, deconstruct. <laughs> Um, simple example, when my boy was young um, and he'd get angry and I'd say to him, you need to go for a run, go out the back, run around the lemon tree, come back and let's talk about it. Yes. You know, and that was, that gave him a skill to go, oh, I'm angry. Yes, recognising it to start with. Recognise. I gave him an activity. Yes. Which then gave me time to take a breath. Yes. And go, oh, okay, let's, let's come back and let's talk about that. Yeah. So it was, it's yeah. not... And now, five, ten years on, we're like, oh, he can just recognise that mm. and he can walk away, I can walk away mm. and then we can come back when we're ready to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that's um, good. We used uh, something similar uh, and that was around, I recognised it when uh, my older son had come home from a party and he was about four or something and he was really agitated and crotchety and cranky and, and so forth. And so we drew an outline of a person and I got him to colour in where he was uh, feeling this and, and it was his stomach. Yeah. So we worked out that because he'd just eaten so much rubbish at this party, it was making him feel sick yeah. and then upset. But I guess that's similar in the running around the lemon tree. Yeah. It is about just recognising that this is happening and his uh, a, a, a language and an activity that you can use to to bring it try and to understand it. Yeah. And I mean, we, we've got the blogs. Um, we're doing podcasts, so we're to have that launched by the end of the year. Wonderful. Um, and we're putting together workshops. I'm working with a colleague who's okay. a, a social worker by by trade, and she works with families. And um, we're putting together parenting workshops. Brilliant. On on communication and how to communicate. And, and we've both got boys, we're both, you know, in that field mm -hmm. professionally and we're delivering something that's real. That's and wonderful. It, and so they'll be available on the Sunshine Coast, is that...? Yep. Yeah, definitely. So we'll launch them here on the Sunshine Coast um, towards the end of the year or early next year. Mm. Um, ideally, we'd love to be in schools, we'd love to be talking to kids and, and running workshops and, and teaching them about communication and connection, respectful relationships. Um, you know, that's that's our long-term place. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's it's early stages and we're just building that and yeah. Yeah. a little journey where it's meant to. It's exciting. It is. Well it's done. Exciting. And um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big thing, isn't it? Because it I, is. yeah, I'm guessing that uh, we, we touched before about asking for help. Yeah. And... I, 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 I mean, we need to do that too. Yeah. You don't have to get down to the, down to that, you know, level of trauma to then say, can I have some help? So, you know, I'm guessing that you might have some help around the house and doing things like that. Is, you know, you incorporating elements like that too? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm really busy. Yeah. <laughs> I work full time. I've got this community that I'm launching. Yeah. Um, I do actually have a social life outside. Yeah. Good, um, good. 
And for me, it's been about um, identifying what's important to me. Yeah. So um, I don't like cleaning. That's not important. I love writing. I love creating stories. I love doing creative things. Mm -hmm. So um, for me to have that balance, I've had to go, well, how can I work this out? And how can I make it so that I'm okay? Um, part of it has been changing what I expect of myself. Yes, um, yes. And then another part of it is asking the boys to say, hey, you need to step in, you need to yep. be a part of this. Um, and knowing when I need time out. Yeah, and, and for me, I call on my community and I say, hey, it's time for you to have um, your nephew <laughs> and um, I'm going dancing on Saturday night. You know, those little things, yeah. um, because it, we need to balance we and do. we need to stay real yeah. and um, that's how I do it. Yeah, fantastic. And some days I just retreat into my room and I sit there and I read a book all weekend yeah. and, and I'm okay with that too. That's brilliant. So That's actually fantastic that you yeah. <laughs> allow yourself to do that. Yeah. yeah. And if I don't, I burn out, Robin. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. And we all do, but yeah. but we don't all stop and say, you know what, I'm just going to close the door and read my book for a whole day. Yeah. And some level that, that prevents us from doing that. And it's been a journey. Like, I I'm haven't sure. always done that. <laughs> I've, you know, um, I'm one of these people that thinks I can achieve anything. I can so do anything, you know, the world is my oyster, I've got an idea, I'm going to make it happen. Mm. And I do, and I go 100 miles an hour and I'll travel to a different country or I'll, you know, tile my bathroom or, <laughs> you know, it just, I go, oh, I can do that, that'll be all right. Yeah, how hard can it how be? How hard can it I be? I know, it's my life's motto, really. <laughs> and a couple of times I go, oh, I have to call up a professional and go, I've pulled out my old kitchen and I've half put in the new one, but I really don't know what I need, <laughs> what I'm doing from here. So, asking for help again. And that's a liberating experience too, isn't okay. it? <laughs> asking for that level of help. Yeah. yeah. And just recognising my own personal limitations. Yeah. Brilliant. I don't realise I've got them, but I think I can do everything, but... <laughs> I agree. It doesn't I'm always work that way. Yeah. So. Thank you for joining me. It's all right, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's just been so nice to hear about your community that you're growing um, and, and to know that you're going to be offering some workshops yeah. uh, later in the year. So it's, what are we, September? September, yeah. yeah. So not far away? Not too far away. Good, all yeah. right. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Share Victoria's story yeah. uh, because, as I said before, it takes people to make a community and it takes a community. Oh, it's a village, really, isn't it? It's a it? village. It takes people to make a village and it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, so we all need to be involved in that. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. You. Is that better? No! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else I'm saying. <laughs> I did that. I did that. Yeah. Disgust. Not disgust, we discuss. Because it's going at the beginning. Not yeah. so what you mean.